Hey, what's up, OCNers? Samsung recently contacted me about looking at their new Odyssey line of gaming monitors that were announced at CES 2020 this past January. It was definitely a treat to see these new Odyssey monitors in action when I was there. I remember mentioning when I awarded the G9 with the Overclock Best of CES award that it would be insane to see a G9 flanked by two 27-inch G7s. Last year, I looked at the CRG9, a 49-inch behemoth with a staggering resolution of 5120 by 1440p at 120 hertz. I also took a look at the 240 hertz 1080p CRG5, which I remember that the one thing that I had complained about was the lack of 1440p resolution. Well, this year's model, Samsung ups the resolution to 1440p, as it sounds like Samsung had listened, as well as offering two different size models the 27 inch and the 32 inch variant, which I have here today for review. So we will see if the G7 lives up to the hype. So running on the specs of the Odyssey 32 G7 kicks off with the aforementioned Quad HD 2560 by 1440p resolution. However, this go around is at 240 hertz with adaptive sync support from both the red and green camps. Having a HDR 600 certification, meaning the 32 G7 can get up to 600 nits at peak brightness, needs to say having a color gamut on the DCI coverage at 95% and sRGB coverage at 125% is looking really good for a factory calibrated monitor right out of the box. The specs are as follows, 32 inches, quad HD 2560 by 1440, 1000R curve, VA panel, HDR 600 with a peak brightness of 600 nits, minimum of 300 nits, color gamut 95% of the DCI coverage, sRGB coverage is 125%, contrast ratio 2500 to 1, 240 hertz refresh rate, a 1 millisecond gray to gray response time, and support for either AMD's FreeSync or NVIDIA's G-Sync. Now let's talk about that crazy resolution of 1440p at 32 inches in more detail. Personally at 27 inches IMO is perfect for 1440p. That said, the first thing I noticed was the PPI, or pixels per inch. It just felt I was looking at a big 1080p screen. So investigating said pixels, I ran a few numbers. Not much to my surprise, the same number lined up, 91.79 PPI, the same as a 24 inch 1080p panel. Now don't get me wrong, the 32 G7 is a pretty sweet monitor that's really aimed at gamers, but 32 inches is just too big for a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now taking the 27 G7 into consideration, PPI looks a bit more defined at 108.79 PPI. Both G7 models have been armed with a refresh rate of 240 Hertz with adaptive sync technology, AKA AMD's FreeSync, which Nvidia's G-Sync works just fine, as well as being branded on the lower left corner of the 32 G7. Another first for Samsung is the 1000R curve, on the G7 as well as this big brother, the 49G9. The 1000R curve screen also has a matte finish reducing glare as well as eye strain. Now, depending on what you are doing with your system, in my case, I am a gamer and a video editor. For gaming, the 32 G7 really is immersive with its dominating presence. That said, for video editing, while being fairly great on color correct on a VA panel, isn't particularly well suited due to images being distorted from the 1000R curvature. Lighting is also something new for Samsung. Having the ability to change the back ring to a few different colors via the OSD, as well as the two front light elements, which I also can be trolled, giving it more gamery vibe. Connection wise, the G7 is well stocked. Two 1.4 display ports, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a two port USB 3.0 hub make for the usual suspects. Samsung also includes the display port, HDMI, and USB 3.0 cables bundled with the G7, something you don't see too often. Samsung has opted for a rather large power brick, as this was probably done to avoid additional heat in the chassis of the 240Hz display. Lastly, the stand that comes with the G7 is really sturdy, however, spans a good way across your desktop. Constructed of metal for the feet and plastic for the neck, the stand does its job well. Also built into the stand is a cable management cover aiding in a stealthy look. Having my test PC, which consists of an Intel i7-8700K at 5GHz with an EVGA RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra should be able to handle the 32G7 nicely at 240Hz. As with all monitors I test, I gave them the world through a couple tests over at Blurbusters. First up was the tried and true UFO frame rates test. Moving to the frame skipping test, which looks like the 32G7 has a solid 5 boxes indicating that there's no frame skipping was present. Next up was the animation timing deviation test, which measures response time. Rock solid. And lastly, I wanted to see what kind of backlight bleed the 32G7 would exhibit. The 32G7 showed signs of bleed on the top and bottom, which is pretty normal for a VA panel. So how did the Odyssey 32G7 from Samsung do? Well, 
For what it does, it does it well. Having a 240Hz refresh rate certainly is going to help you see those extra frames otherwise lost with other gaming monitors. Samsung, which is arguably a pretty premium brand, so much that you're going to pay a bit for that premium. Priced at $699 for the 27G7 and $799 for the 32G7 is definitely a hefty price tag, but really still in the same ballpark as its competitors. Doing a quick search for 240Hz 1440p gaming monitors, HP's Omen X27 popped up for $650 and Lenovo's Y27 GQ for under 600, but it's a TN panel. That's it, slim pickings. So compared to the competition, Samsung's Odyssey G7 really does take the 240Hz 1440p crown. Earning Overclock's Hot Award. Okay guys, thanks for tuning in. If you want links to the Samsung G7, links will be below. Also, if you haven't liked and subscribed by now, what are you waiting for? Blue Devil, out.